What's up everybody? My name is Chef Lindsay Noto and I'm here with Cahaba Brewing Company. We are going to be making my favorite fried fish recipe for the Cahaba River Society Fish Fry Down. Um, I didn't want to do the obvious, so I tend to like to cook with a lot of Japanese inspired ingredients. I love spice. I love heat. Um, they have a very balanced palate, I think, over there. You know, they use a lot of crunch, a lot of acid. So I wanted to find a way to incorporate those different layers of textures and flavors into this fried fish dish. Um, I'm not going to be deep frying the fish. I'm actually going to do a pan fried interpretation of a chicken katsu sandwich. So katsu in Japan is um, basically a panko breaded chicken. Traditionally it is chicken and a lot of times you'll see it in sandwich form. So um, instead of using chicken for this recipe, I'm going to be using a white fish. Uh, you can use any white fish of your preference. I'm going to be using tilapia today. Um, I bought this at the Fresh Market right down the street. Um, I also really like cod. It's a very affordable cut of white fish. It's mild. Um, it's very balanced. It's not going to overpower everything else on your sandwich. So I bought this Japanese milk bread from my new friend Armani Reeves, who I met through Quarantine Cuisine. Follow him on Facebook. Armani is actually making this bread and selling it now. He'll deliver it to you. You can pay him through Venmo. I picked this loaf up this morning. It was still warm when I got it. Um, but what's cool about milk bread, it's not going to be super porous like typical bread. Um, and it's also not going to have that tang like sourdough would. Um, it's not very yeasty. It's just very fluffy, light, melt-in-your-mouth bread. It's beautiful. So we are going to use that for our sandwich bread. Um, obviously, the goal here is to find a fun way to incorporate this awesome cahava lager into the recipe. So, um, you know, I didn't want to do anything too obvious, and I love pickled anything. So I tried my hand at making pickles uh, with the cahava lager. Um, I went pretty straightforward with this, as you see my straight up cahava pickles. Um, and I just used a normal pickling cucumber that I bought. 90% of this I bought at Fresh Market. Um, it's right down the street from me. I love their products and they do tend to carry a lot of these Japanese ingredients that I love so much. So um, we, you will get the recipe for these pickles, but in the brine, not only did I use white distilled vinegar, but I used an entire can of the Cahaba Lager. I wanted to be sure not to use any powerful spices or herbs in my pickle brine because I really wanted the flavor of the lager to, to shine when you taste the pickle. So, um, you know, typically when you're pickling, I think a lot of people are maybe scared by the process. Very, very easy. I made these pickles in about 10 minutes. I got these mason jars. Apparently there's a shortage of mason jars right now. Everybody's at home quarantined and pickling everything they've been growing in their quarantine garden. But um, I bought these at Piggly Wiggly. Um, slice the pickles. All I did was simply boil the cahaba lager with a little bit of salt, sugar, distilled vinegar, and water. So for my spices, I just used a little jar of the McCormick pickling spice. I wanted to keep it really simple. It's got a nice balance of mustard seed, clove, peppercorn, a little bit of crushed red pepper. So it's going to be a really balanced pickle. Because I love the way this pickle turned out so much, I'm going to use it on the sandwich. Then I'm also going to chop it up and incorporate it into a slaw that we're going to be using on the sandwich. So traditionally the katsu, you can take this several different ways. I like my food very flavorful, very spicy. I want my eyebrows to sweat from the heat. So I'm going to try to incorporate the spice in as many different elements of this sandwich as I can. But because this bread is so soft, you know, the, the panko is going to be very crunchy, but I also want another crunch element. So I'm going to make a slaw, more or less, with very finely shredded cabbage or angel hair. You know, you can buy this in a bag already shaved at the grocery store. Um, if you're not a big fan of cabbage or you don't love slaw, shredded lettuce works just as well. So we're going to start and go ahead and I'm going to slice my bread, get this out of the way so we can start preparing our slaw. So because I really like spice and I want the heat to be in just about every element of this sandwich, what I'm going to do is make a mayo base that I'm going to toss my slaw in. And I'm also um, going to spread it on the sandwich when we build it. So I'm using what's called QP mayo. This is a Japanese mayonnaise and, you know, the Southern girl loves Duke man Duke's mayonnaise. Like, I mean, it's the best, we all know. However, what makes QP mayo so special is 
the Japanese, they use only the egg yolk, not the whole egg. So you're going to have almost this custard consistency. It's going to have a brighter yellow color. It's very rich, super flavorful. And again, you know, it's going to have almost like a custard texture to it. Um, the flavor's great. You can buy this at any Asian market. Again, Fresh Market sells this as well. It's affordable. You really, you don't have to do anything to it. I'm a, I'm a mayo gal, you know, anywhere where I can substitute this for regular mayonnaise, I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm not gonna measure anything here just because I'm, I'm making this for myself and my friends here with me. So I'm just gonna make it like I know I like it. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this QP mayo and then I'm gonna take some sriracha. So basically I'm making a spicy mayo. You can use any hot sauce you want. It can be Frank's, whatever your palate prefers. I'm gonna use um, sriracha just because I feel like it fits with the theme and the flavors of the sriracha work really well with the QP mayo. Uh, most restaurants, when you go to a sushi place, this is what your spicy mayo is gonna consist of, is QP mayo and sriracha. And everybody's like, how is it always so good? Spicy mayo, it's the best. It's because they use the best mayo and, and the best hot sauce. So I'm gonna go a little crazy here with the sriracha. Again, I like the heat, so I wanna pack as much of that in there. We're just gonna whisk it together. So we're gonna whisk this in here. And I don't really feel like you need to season this. If you're, if you're big on salt, you wanna throw a little bit of salt in this aioli, knock yourself out. I'm gonna add my seasoning in with my breading for the fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate I'm gonna save a little bit of this aioli for spreading on my bread, um, spreading on the sandwich. So I'm gonna put about 90% of this aioli in here with this cabbage. Save that for later, and then we're just gonna give it a good toss. So this is again, personal preference on how much uh, you want of the pickles in your slaw. Again, I'm gonna add them to the sandwich as well later. So I'm just gonna do a real nice rough chop on these pickles. I don't want to chop them up too finely like relish because I still want to be able to pick up on that texture when I bite into this sandwich. So I'm just going to go a couple times over, get them chopped up, give it another mix, and then we will be ready to go with the claw and we can get started on our fish breading. All right, so we're ready to go there. We'll put that aside. We got our bread. So I'm gonna to move to the fish. Um, I liked tilapia for this interpretation because the filet is very thin, as you can tell. Um, with a katsu sandwich, the chicken tends to be very thin, so when you cut into that sandwich, you just see almost even layers of milk bread to protein to milk bread. So I wanted something that I didn't have to try to butterfly. I know that this is gonna cook very quickly. Um, panko does get very crispy, it gets beautiful and brown, but I wanted a thinner cut of fish so as not to burn my panko and the fish be cooked all the way through. So I've got two portions here. Again, um, when I was playing with this at home, I used cod. The cod was perfect. Um, you can, there's a couple really great local markets that you can buy some of the seafood at. There's one over in Cahaba Heights that I love. Um, but again, fresh market, any local grocery store. I'm not a snob. When I'm, when I'm frying it and putting it on a sandwich with this amazing bread, I don't really care what cut it is. If you're partial to catfish, you can use catfish. That's awesome. So we've got our breading station over here. Now, again, I'm a crazy person when it comes to the heat. So with your breading station, we're going to start with the flour, move to the egg, and then finish with the panko. I'm going to add about a really heavy tablespoon of sriracha to the egg for my breading and get that mixed in there. I really, like I said, I want the layers of heat to come through every aspect of this sandwich. So we'll just give this a little whisk. All right, we're good to go there. So what I've done already is I've seasoned my flour. Um, I'm not going to season the fish itself because I've got enough seasoning in the breading. So in the flour mixture, I've got cayenne, salt, and garlic powder. Um, you know, if you're, all of this can be done without the layer of heat that I'm putting in this dish. So if you're concerned that this is going to be too spicy, you can leave the cayenne out of the breading. You can leave the sriracha out of the egg wash. For me, this is just what my palate prefers. And when it all comes out in the wash, it's not going to be quite as spicy as I'm, as I'm leading on. 
So we're going to go ahead, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little oil in my pan to go ahead and get this heated up. I'm just using extra virgin olive oil, any type of um, low heat temp oil that you've got in your kitchen works. Now, again, because we aren't deep frying this, we want enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan and just give maybe an eighth of an inch layer of oil. That way, that bottom half of the fish is completely touching the oil and getting good and fried and brown. The key when you're breading things is to try to always keep one dry hand. So you use one hand for any wet elements and then keep one hand dry. Um, I'm probably going to screw this up because I've made that point, but we're, we're going to do our best here. So you want to make sure that your fish is completely coated on each side. Get it in there and then shake off any excess. Any excess is going to cause some clumping in your breading, which we don't want. Then I'm going to put my flour coated fish down in my egg wash. This egg wash is what's going to help the panko stick. Now that we're completely coated here, we'll let that drip off a little bit and then go to our panko. So see, that's exactly what I was saying I should do now that this wet hand, I try to go right in the dry. So I saved that hand. So I want to make sure that it's good and packed on. Um, don't want to leave any gaps. Completely cover this fish on both sides. Shake off any excess. So let's take a look. I can smell that oil. Typically, you know it. Know that your oil is going to be ready if you want to hit it with a little drop of water. It's going to fizzle or sizzle up a little bit. That's when you know your oil is good and ready to go. We're going to hit these. Look at that. That's exactly what we're looking for. All right, guys, so we've got our fish all ready to go. As you see, this is the exact color and texture we're looking for. This is beautiful. It's super crunchy. You can almost hear the crispy. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. This is beautiful. Um, about two and a half to three minutes on each side, you want this beautiful golden brown color. Again, watch your smaller pieces. You wanna make sure that you don't leave those on too long so as to not overcook them. Um, when you're pulling them out of the oil, you can use a wire rack. I like to just use paper towels. This is how we do it in my house growing up. It soaks off all that extra grease because you don't want a greasy sandwich. So I've got my extra spicy mayo, the pickles, and my slaw. And I've done that on both sides of the sandwich. So now we're going to put our fish right here on the sandwich in the center. And y'all, we are just about done. We're going to close this bad boy up, kind of press it down a little bit there and give it a slice right down the middle. Oh my God, that bread is so soft. It's insane. Then this is what you're looking for. You want to see all those layers on each side. And I hope I'm not going to make anybody jealous here, but I'm going to go ahead and just tear into this bad boy. Wow, that is awesome, <laughs> sorry. Guys, I really hope that y'all enjoy this sandwich as much as I do. I've had so much fun doing this. Again, I'm Chef Lindsay Noto here with Cahaba Brewing Company for the Fish Fry Down for the Cahaba River Society.